let us welcome um, Jennifer and Min Min from the University of Birmingham. They do a, a split presentation on the CAPT project. Jennifer is a, a research fellow at Birmingham, um, like the research in the CAPT project. She has also worked in industry on various D DSP and FPGA based projects. Later, Min Min will take over the presentation. Min Min is a postdoc who is currently engaged in the CAPT project. Latest, yes. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to be talking about a project that I've been working on recently with Hewlett Packard down in Bristol. And they were particularly interested in the Cherry Risk 5 processor and the Zephyr operating system. So essentially, I've been porting the Zephyr operating system onto the Cherry architecture. And I'm going to talk a bit about Zephyr and give you a bit of a flavour as to the modifications that were made to Zephyr and its build system to enable it to work on the Cherry architecture. I'll briefly talk about um, some of the known Zephyr CVE test cases that we tested against. And then my colleague Min Min will give a live demonstration on Cherry Zephyr on the Flute processor, one of our FPGA development boards um, using a buffer overflow scenario. So for those who are not familiar with the Zephyr operating system, it's an open source operating system and is a small footprint designed specifically for embedded devices. It's highly configurable and when you build it for a particular application, it will only pull in um, those parts of the operating system that it actually needs to support that application. It also supports a number of different architectures and boards and does have some memory protection, but it's very uh, small and it's not universal across all these different architectures. One of the downsides of Zephyr, as with many other software systems, is that it has a large amount of C code base and architecture specific assembly, um, leading to these types of memory safety issues that we all know about. And there has been a number of memory safety vulnerabilities that have been identified in Zephyr operating system in the past. So these kind of things make uh, Zephyr an ideal candidate to port across into the Cherry architecture. So there's three main areas of modifications to the Zephyr build system. Um, the first one is to provide toolchain support for the LVM Cherry compiler. The second one is to do uh, specific code modifications to the actual Zephyr operating system itself. And then the third one is to add board support um, to both the Cherry RISC-V 64-bit and the um, Flute FPGA-based RISC-V processors. So the first modification uh, was to provide support for the LVM Cherry compiler. And the LVM Cherry toolchain can be installed using the Cherry SDK. And along with that, you also get the QEMU Cherry RISC-V uh, processor. But this needs to be integrated automatically into the Zephyr build. And the easiest way to build Zephyr is to, uh, using this WEST command. And when we use this West command, you specify a application that you want to run on top of Zephyr and also your target hardware. So in this example, we're running the Hello World application on the QEMU RISC-V 64. And this will build your software application using all the default configurations. Underneath West is CMake and the default build chain for CMake is GCC. But we want to be able to um, change this to the LVM Cherry compiler. So to do this, we um, need to change some environment variables to point to the Cherry SDK and also um, set up the toolchain variant for LVM Cherry. And in addition to this, we also need to set up um, some new CMake files um, so that when we build Zephyr, it will automatically pull in the correct compiler, link and bin tools for the Cherry um, build toolchain. Inside the CMake file for the compiler, we've also created an extra configuration for Zephyr called Config Cherries. And when this is set, it will automatically set all of the um, compiler flags to automatically build for pure capabilities. When this isn't set, then it will automatically build for normal RISC-V. So as well as providing um, toolchain support for Zephyr using the LVM compiler, we also need to make actual specific modifications to the assembly code and inline code assembly to make sure that your um, software is now using the Cherry instructions. 
And we do this using the hash if the cherry pure capability. Um, and so, for example, here I'm showing for your a normal risk five code, we're using the instruction move um, the SAC pointer into T0 register. And we can swap this for cherry instruction by using the CMove instruction, um, your capability SAC pointer into capability T0 register. And any other instructions that are compatible with, with both Cherry and RISC V will go outside of this um, if uh, statement. So as well as just um, swapping instructions from RISC V to Cherry, you also need to do other slightly more complicated things as well, such as add in alternative macros and alternative define. So for example, if you, you're setting specific registers here, so you've got T naught, then you need to swap those with the capability registers C T naught. Um, as well as um, just swapping in instructions, we also need to add um, instructions, particularly in the um, boot up code. So we need to be able to boot our RISC-V machine now into actual capability machine. And this involves switching modes and setting up specific capability requirements, such as the global pointer table, any other global capabilities. Um, we also need to bound the program counter to your program code. And at the end of your boot code, we also need to zero out the default data capability so that nothing else can get access to the whole of your memory space. As well as making uh, modifications to the actual assembly code, there's also modifications that need to be made to the C code itself, um, and particularly in relation to structures and alignment. So in the um, structures for the Zephyr operating system, they tend to use unsigned longs to uh, represent registers and other pointers. But in a capability mode, we need to change these types to integer pointer types so that the um, compiler tools know that these need to be twice the length. In addition to this, Zephyr also uses um, packed structures to try to pack everything down into memory as, as small as possible. Um, but in your um, capability architecture, you need to make sure that all your capabilities are aligned to 16 bytes for 64-bit architecture. And the, the same applies to your section alignments in your linker script. So if you've got capabilities that are within your those particular sections, and they also need to be aligned to 16 bytes as well. So structures are also used um, by the assembly code. Um, these are accessed using fixed offsets in the Zephyr system. And one of the things that the Zephyr build system does, it has this offset code as shown there on the left, and it automatically generates a header file with all your fixed offsets in that's used by your assembly code. And for a um, pure capability architecture, we need to change this offset code. So for example here, if you're using the MEPC register um, as one of your structure offsets, then you need to swap this for the MEPCC capability register. And this will affect all of your fixed offsets that the assembly code now uses. So the Zephyr build process itself um, involves a multi-step approach. So you've got your input source files, um, and these are used to build a pre-elf binary file. There's a, a Python script which reads information out of this pre-elf binary file and generates some more source files. And then it generates your final um, program elf binary. Now the Python script itself um, expects specific structure sizes when it reads out this information. So we, again, we use this config cherry configuration parameter to change the, um, the structure sizes that it reads out for capabilities. One of the things that the Python script does is that it reads information out of the pre-elf um, and generates an interrupt table. So it reads out interrupt function pointers and these create fixed addresses and, and you can't have fixed addresses in capability architecture. Everything needs to be um, by valid capabilities. So what we've done here is we've modified some of the code in the Python script to make sure that these fixed addresses are now symbols so that the Cherry compiler can turn these into valid capabilities.
And um, there's a similar scenario with the device tree mapping. So for each of the software device drivers, they use a um, base address, which is a fixed base address to um, set up their memory map mapping. And so we also need to change these into valid capabilities as well. So the third area of um, modification to the build system is to provide board support for these different architectural configurations. And this involves setting up the build tree structure and the default configurations for each of the architectures. And so for this first one here for the um, QEMU Cherry Risk 5, um, this will build automatically for a normal Risk 5 on your Cherry processor. And then the second one down, which is the PureCat one, will build automatically for a pure capability system. So now when we run the West command, um, shown at the bottom here, we can build for the Hello World application. And now we're building automatically for a pure capability system on the uh, Cherry Risk 564. So this is um, the output of the Hello World running on the Zephyr operating system in pure capability mode. Um, and this is running on the QEMU. So we tested um, Cherry Zephyr against a number of known um, vulnerabilities in Zephyr. Um, and these are in the Bluetooth and the IEEE 802.15.4 wireless software stacks. So we looked at a buffer overflow, a null pointer dereference, and an out of bounds write. And um, as we'd expected, uh, we uh, got cherry exceptions for each of these uh, vulnerabilities when we ran them in a pure capability um, architecture mode. So I'm just going to talk a bit about um, the buffer overflow demo, and then I'll pass you over to my colleague, uh, Min Min, who will go through the demo. Um, so we've got a buffer overflow, which is um, running in an application on top of a Zephyr operating system. Um, we've got an input string called print string, which is being copied into a buffer um, without any string length checks. So we've got three scenarios. The first scenario is we've got normal Zephyr running on normal RISC-V architecture, where the input string um, doesn't overflow the buffer and it will just run through the demo. Second scenario is that we've got, um, again, normal Zephyr running on RISC-V, um, but this time we're overflowing the demo uh, sorry, overflowing the buffer, and this causes a return address to be overwritten and uh, some attacker code to run. And then the third scenario is we're now running Cherry Zephyr on the um, Cherry Risk 5, um, and we're expecting hardware exception to stop the program. So now I'm going to pass you over to Min Min, who is going to uh, take you through the live demo. Uh, okay, so right now at my hand, there is a piece of FPGA board. So currently, our uh, blue spec, blue core is running, which has been uh, extended to support the cherry characteristics. So following Jen's uh, insight for instruction, demonstration, uh, through introduction of the demos. So let's have a look at them in action. So sequentially executed on this board. Let's start the first demo. So the first demo showcases that the normal safe operating system with no buffer overflow, we can see that the string is seamlessly transferred into the buffer. Then let's move to the second demo. So in the second demo is the normal CIFA operating system with the overflow. We can see that the return address of the function string copy is redirected to an attack code with message showing you have been hacked. 
Then let's go to the last demo. So in the last demo, if the cherry enhanced zephyr operates under cherry risk five. So in the face of the overflow, we can see that it promptly triggers a hardware exception and ports the program and prevents the further exploitation of the overflow. So with this, we end our lab demonstration. Thank you for your attention and we're both happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions for Jennifer or Milman? Okay. That was a very nice demo. Um, can you tell us how many lines of code are there for us? Because the code thing has to change the data to work. Uh, so, so probably about 10 to 15 uh, assembly code files. Um, yeah, so about 10 to 15 assembly code files, and they were specific just to the um, the RISC V. Um, obviously, if you started modifying other architectures, there'll be a lot more. Um, and in terms of the C code, that's probably about uh, similar, I'd say, modifying that. But then you've got all the build system around that as well that you need to modify as well. So, I mean, Zephyr itself is quite a small operating system. No, because uh, so does the compiler take care of uh, converting things to uh, was it unsigned, unsigned long? So um, so the way the code is written, it specifies the type in, in the example I had up there. Um, for the register was an unsigned long, so that was uh, 64 bits. So it assumes that that would be 64 bits. So you need to be able to change that to twice that length if you're representing a capability. Thank uh, Jennifer and Min again.